welcome to Wild Life Sydney Zoo. My name is Renee and behind me here is Kiefer Mel and we are joined by our beautiful southern cassowary whose name is Princess. So we'll tell you a little bit more about Princess a bit later on but what we're going to attempt to do first is a bit of a training session. So training is incredibly important with our animals it ensures we're able to do things with them without stressing the animal out and of course without stressing ourselves out. So what we'll be doing today is hopefully getting our cassowary into this crate here. So what I will be using is a target stick. It's essentially a tennis ball on the end of a stick. And I do have a clicker and we'll hopefully be able to target him into the crate. So whilst I am doing so, Mel here will tell you a little bit about the training and we'll go from there. But before we attempt this, I do need to mention they are animals, they do have a mind of their own. If he does not want to participate, we will not force him to do so. He is usually pretty good, so we'll see how he goes today. Hey bud. Awesome, so as Ren mentioned, in her hand she has the target with the tennis ball on the end. So the idea is that he'll touch that tennis ball, you'll hear a click, so that means at that moment in time he has done the right thing and shortly after he'll be getting a reward. So Princess is doing an amazing job. He can be quite temperamental about new things. He gets a little bit nervous, uh, but Ren has been working really, really hard to get him into this crate. So one of the benefits of this crate uh, is that we can actually do lots of veterinary stuff with him. Um, so he is one of the world's most deadliest birds. So we don't really want to have to go in there and restrain him. It's stressful for him. It's dangerous for us and him. It can take up a lot of time as well. So it's really good welfare that he can voluntarily step into that crate, get his favourite foods. If we needed, a vet could come and check him out. He could check his feet, his wings, his beak, anything at all. And the princess would be comfortable in Ren and the vet's care. Another great thing about the crate is that we use, we use it as part of his enrichment. So to keep his mind stimulated. So we try and do this once a day, give him lots of exciting activities to do. So he did a fantastic job just then. Um, he went straight in without hesitation. He followed that target. And of course he is receiving his favorite treats, which are red grapes. So Princess here I mentioned is a Southern cassowary. So there are three species of cassowaries, but the Southern cassowary is the only one found in Australia. I'll give that one to you now. So Princess, you may have a look at a few of his features on his body, but one that I would like to talk about first is those nice big feet of his. So Jade down there who's getting a nice close up on his feet. And the reason I'm talking to you about his feet is because these animals are actually known as the world's deadliest bird. So that innermost toe of their feet has an incredibly long nail and they'll use this a bit like a dagger. You see cassowaries, they are incredibly territorial. They are a solitary species. So they will use these dagger-like toenails to protect their territory and fight off any predators. So this toe, when they are threatened, they'll kick straight out a bit like a karate kick and then they'll strike down with that nail. So they are incredibly powerful animals. So I mentioned this cassowary's name is Princess and we do actually have a male cassowary. So I know it is a little bit of a funny name for a male cassowary, but he definitely lives up to that name of Princess. You see, out in the wild, Cassowaries, they actually have the ability of swallowing something about the size of an apple completely whole. However, Princess here, he does live up to that name. We need to cut up his diet nice and small. You missed that one, bud. In pieces about this big. You see, Princess won't go near anything that isn't about the size of a quarter of an apple. So he definitely lives up to that name of Princess. But another reason why we did give him that name you may see this beautiful big pond in his exhibit. You see, wild cassowaries, they actually love to wade around in water. But Princess here, he hates getting his little toes wet at the only part that he can cross in order to get to the other side. So he definitely is a princess, but you may see that beautiful cask on top of his head. So we thought this looked like a crown. That's why we did actually pick out the name Princess to begin with. But this cask, it's actually made of keratin. So it's quite soft, it's quite spongy on the inside. And there were a couple of theories as to what this cask was used for. 
things that range from parting the rainforest as they're running through to defending themselves. But the most recent one that did come to light is that they use it for thermoregulation. So Southern cassowaries, they are found up in tropical North Queensland. It is quite humid, it is quite hot. So it's believed they're able to pump up all their blood into this cask and it acts like an inbuilt air conditioning system. So it is able to cool them down. So it is a pretty cool feature of them. Um, but other things you may notice with princess, one thing I would like to point out, if you wanna come around this way, Jade, is those spikes down the side of his body. So these spikes, they're actually the remnants of his wings. You see, cassowaries, they are part of the family of birds known as the ratites. So they are a flightless bird species, so he is unable to get up into the air and start flying above our heads. But those spikes are just what's left of his wings. But what they, they lack in their flying ability, they make up for in their speed. So princess and other cassowaries, they can reach speeds of about 60 kilometers an hour. So it is incredibly fast paced. Um, and that is one of the coolest facts about cassowaries. But another cool thing about cassowaries, I mentioned princess here is a male. You see males, they actually do all of the rearing of the chicks. So when the male and female do come together out in the wild, they are a solitary species, so they will come together for their mating. Once that female then lays the eggs, she'll actually take off. She may mate with another male or two, leaving all of the work up to our male cassowaries. So what they do is they actually sit on the eggs for about 55 days. They'll keep them nice and safe. They won't leave for food. They won't leave for water. They're very dedicated fathers. And even once they hatch, that's not their job done. They'll actually raise the chicks until they're roughly 12 to 18 months. They'll teach them the ways of the rainforest, how to survive, and just how to be a cassowary. But a few of the things I mentioned before, the fact that they have the ability of swallowing something about the size of an apple completely whole, actually means these animals are a keystone species in the rainforest. You see cassowaries, they actually eat the fruits that are either too large or too toxic for other animals to eat. And they're actually consuming the seeds as well. As a result, those seeds are going through their digestive system and are dispersed in their droppings. And believe it or not, over 150 plant species actually depend on our cassowaries in order to survive. So they are a very major part of our rainforest ecosystem. And if they weren't around, our rainforest wouldn't be around either. But Princess here, he has been with us since he was a juvenile. And you see juvenile cassowaries, they look nothing like Princess does today. You see they're tiny, they're brown, they're stripy. And essentially that is why we gave the name Princess. We thought we did actually have a female cassowary. But female cassowaries, they tend to get quite a bit larger than the males, roughly 20 kilos heavier, and they do stand quite a bit taller as well. So as our little princess started growing, that weight plateaued, and it really plateaued at quite a low weight for a female cassowary. And that's when we began questioning whether we did actually have a female cassowary. Based on his size, based on his behavior and his temperament, we do actually believe we have a male cassowary. But like I mentioned earlier, he does absolutely live up to that name. He is a gentle giant, he is a complete sweetheart, and he is a beautiful addition to our wildlife Sydney Zoo family. If you zoom in on his face there, you'll notice his beautiful eyelashes. They are much better than my own. He's got that gorgeous blue head and the red wattles as well. So these animals are absolutely gorgeous and I've loved talking about him. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to uh, add them to the comments section. We'll get back to them as soon as we possibly can. But we'd love bringing you to our Princess Cassowary because unfortunately you still are unable to come into our zoo. He's still receiving the best care he possibly can. And as you saw, we are giving him the best training we can as well. It's new and improved for him and he is smashing those training goals. So it's been a pleasure talking to you guys today and he simply enjoyed it as well. He's had all of his tasty treats, but stick around and we can't wait to see you again soon. Bye guys.